Olympic Park is located on a hill southeast of the University of Oregon campus. From the heart of campus, it is a 30-minute walk, 13-minute bike ride, or a four-minute drive to the park. From my discussions with other students on campus, many of them enjoy going to Hendricks Park. According to statisticalatlas.com, most of the people in the Fairmont area are between 15 to 30 years old. When using the park, I have noticed that most of the other users are either young college or high school students or young families. Hiking to the park on multiple occasions, I have noticed that the housing becomes more high-end the closer you get to the park. According to areavibes.com, the Fairmont neighborhood has a 19% higher cost of living index number compared to the city of Eugene as a whole, which also relates to the area having a 61% higher median home value compared to Eugene. This means that the people with the best access to the park are relatively wealthy since they can afford more expensive living accommodations. Statisticalatlas.com backs this conclusion by revealing that the people living in the Fairmont neighborhood make most of the same or higher income levels than the rest of Eugene. From a so social perspective, the lack of affordable housing and the long walk from areas with affordable housing means that this park is not particularly accessible or inviting to people with lower incomes, creating an exclusive park. Information for Hendricks Park is provided by a PDF from the U City of Eugene's website. Hendricks Park has two full-time gardeners and one part-time park specialist. They, along with volunteers, maintain the 80 acres of park and forest throughout the year. Around the picnic areas, they mow the grass and have an irrigation system. The park could be more sustainable if they used plants that did not require additional irrigation and could survive with only rainwater, since they do not currently collect rainwater for reuse. They also pick up and remove any litter in the park, which is great for keeping the park clean and safe for both people and animals. The park also has garbage cans and bathrooms to promote the cleanliness of the site. The park could become more sustainable by also having, having recycling containers rather than just garbage cans. The park staff and volunteers also remove invasive species like English ivy and plant native species in its place. This maintains an ecosystem that can survive without being dominated by an invasive plants. They also leave logs from naturally fallen trees or trees they cut because of a hazard to create habitats. Park tries to be an example of how a sustainable park and forest works and looks like, and they have educational opportunities throughout the park in forms of informational markers. In conclusion, Hendricks Park does a decent job at showcasing a sustainable outdoor space, but could use improvements. The park needs to be accessible to all income levels. They need to encourage people to come by foot or bike, rather than a car. This may mean limiting the number of parking spaces and leaving most of them for handicapped users, along with the installation of more bike racks. They should also find ways of collecting and storing rainwater and limiting irrigation to only using the stored rainwater. They should also limit the use of gas-powered tools and opt for manually, manually powered tools. They should also use any grass clippings or raked up plant debris on the plant beds for nutrients to return into the ground. Overall. I think Hendricks Park does a good job at educating people about the environment and using the outdoors in a sustainable fashion.